recently in this Big 12 rivalry. Down the left side, a leaping effort, and a catch for the touchdown! Are you kidding me? Two-point conversion try, Purdy back to pass, throws late, it is! Motley's got it! Intercepted! The Sooners have dodged a bullet! Now, with the Sooners seething off an upset, and the Cyclones relishing their role as underdogs, and sure to be high scoring, Oklahoma and Iowa State on Saturday Night Football. And welcome everyone to Jack Trice Stadium on the campus of Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa. A chilly early October night. The temperature in the mid-50s. We will have fans here tonight. About 15,000 socially distanced as the Cyclones play host to the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi everybody, welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. Delighted to have you with us as we get a look at the Sooners who have dominated the Big 12, especially lately. They've won the last five conferences titles outright but Todd some wonder if this team is as good as it's been in recent years they look vulnerable after an opening loss at home last week to K-State and Iowa State thinks this could be the year they make the move from becoming very good to perhaps a conference champion yeah it's been a real steady build under Matt Campbell this is his fifth year they went from just trying to be competitive to winning some tough games to now taking that next step can they contend for a conference championship he's got a very mature experienced defense he's got a savvy veteran quarterback and I think with Oklahoma they're a little wobbly coming in here tonight they're still the champions the road to the Big 12 championship still runs through Norman but Iowa State's in a great position to take a big step forward tonight and his opposite number the Iowa State starting quarterback also from Arizona out of Perry High and Gilbert is Brock Purdy he said this is a huge night for the program as they try to take that next step Todd McShay and if they're going to do it he has to play better less uh, mistake prone football Ball tonight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not going to be the number one overall pick like we saw from Oklahoma two years in a row, but he's going to be an NFL draft pick. And watch him tonight. I, I love watching Purdy's game because you see the, the arm angle changing, the ability to extend plays, driving the ball vertically. He is a special talent. The thing he's got to do, Sean, and you alluded to it, he's got to take the mistake out. He knows it. We talked to him. He said, you know, the, the younger me would want to make a big play on third and long. I'm trying to learn how to check down. That's the big key for him tonight. If Iowa State's going to pull off the upset, it's got to be with Purdy playing big time football, but also limiting some of those mistakes. And Iowa State hasn't defeated the Sooners here since 1960. They've lost 24 in a row here at home. They nearly pulled off the upset last year. They were 21 points down in the second half, rallied again within one in the final minute, went for two for the win, but Parnell Motley picked off the two-point try, and Lincoln Riley's team survived 42-41. And as we welcome in Molly McGrath, Molly, the game last year in Norman still very fresh in the mind of the Cyclones. That was a tough one. Yeah, that's true, Sean. Iowa State players getting ready to run out of this tunnel right now with a chip on their shoulder and a memory from last year that they're trying to erase. It's been almost a year since that one-point loss to Oklahoma, but running back Reese Hall tells me he's thought about that game almost every single day since he could detail every single moment of the last two plays of that game and tells me that failed two-point conversion attempt plays on a loop in his head like a terrible movie and that's an ending that he's hoping to change here tonight he says they need to take the next step as a program win games like this to contend for the big 12 title so they're looking at this game as a must win for their program Sean. Oklahoma Sooners getting ready to take the field here at Jack Trice Stadium they blew uh, 21 point lead in the second half last week against Kansas State as the Wildcats scored the last 24 points of that game. They beat Oklahoma for the second year in a row. The Sooners have not lost back to back regular season games since October of 1999. And Bob Stoops' first year as head coach, that is by far the longest active stretch in the country. Alabama hasn't lost back-to-back -back regular season games since 2007. 40 wins in a row in the regular season after a loss for the Sooners. The Iowa State Cyclones walking into Jack Trice Stadium. 
One of the best stretches of football in school history. They've been to a bowl game each of the last three years. They believe they're ready to be conference champions. Perhaps they'll take a major step in that direction tonight. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff remains next, and now we go inside Nissan's Heisman House. The Iowa State Cyclones have taken the field. You're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. This is the Big 12 on ESPN. It's already been an entertaining day in the Big 12. Texas, a loser at home to TCU. It was a TCU team that Iowa State beat in Fort Worth in its conference opener last Saturday. Nice bounce back win for the Cyclones after their season opening loss against Louisiana. They made a lot of mistakes. They didn't have any fans here for that game. They're happy to have 15,000 here tonight. Well, Oklahoma last week gave up 24 unanswered points to Kansas State and it's a head scratcher because defensively 90% of the game they played outstanding defense but there were a handful of plays in the second half that were just brutal on the toss elected to receive so it'll be Eddie Ogumba to kick off we mentioned a cool night the temperatures dropped a few degrees down to 50 was in the high 20s in parts of Iowa last night. 15 degrees cooler than usual for early October. Charleston Rambo will not try to bring the kickoff out. So here is Spencer Rattler, redshirt freshman, got into three games behind Jalen Hurts last year. Consensus number one recruit in the country out of Pinnacle High School. In the Phoenix area, Tanner Mordecai was the primary backup last year. As we said, Rattler got some time, threw for 11,083 yards in high school, the Arizona State record. Had an up and down first two games, eight passing touchdowns in two games. Only Sam Ellinger had more, Texas with 10. Rattler's on target with the first play from scrimmage. Equally adept throwing the football on the move or out of the pocket. Handed it off to TJ Pledger running right, and he has a first down across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Todd, some, some got two Heisman winners and a runner up, and he may be the best passer of all of them. Play action fake to Pledger. Rattler going deep, has a man behind the defense. It's Charleston Rambo inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal Sooners at the. Rather took a hit. But got the ball off for a 51 yard gain. Now it's back to the ground, and it's pleasure. Inside the two, they'll mark it at the one. They haven't run. And Clemson has done better in average yards per carry the last two years. They try to jam it in at the goal line. Jeremiah Hall got stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Been a loss of a half a yard for Hall. The freshman Seth McGowan, the running back, he's been their leading rusher, and he got belted down shy of the goal line by one of the safeties. They play with three of them. It's Lawrence White, the fifth year senior from Bakersfield. A nice stand by the Iowa State defense. Here's Gabe Burkich, who didn't miss a kick last year. 17 for 17 in field goals. And that kick is good. Oh, if that will be the case. It's not official yet. There's another hurdle to go over, but they're optimistic. That kickoff by Gabe Barkage will be a touchback. And I would guess, based on the vibe I got from the Oklahoma officials I spoke with, he will play next week, but they said it's not 100% confirmed yet. So here are the Cyclones on offense. To the defense. Stood up at the goal line and held the Sooners to three. And there's Brees Hall, the leading rusher in the Big 12 through two games. And there's Brock Purdy at a record-setting season last year. Passing yardage mark, passing touchdowns, and a single-season Cyclone record with six 300-yard passing games. Very sad, competitive kid, and he can, he can make plays with his feet as well as his arm. Junior from Gilbert, Arizona. 
He's on target. And that'll be a first down for Iowa State. On the completion of Xavier Hutchinson. Fittingly, Xavier is the X receiver. Newcomer out of Blinn Junior College. Birdie making his 26th career start. 15 and 9 as the signal caller for the pass. Tom Manning, the offensive coordinator, said he's as competitive as anybody's coach. They bring pressure at him. He escapes, locks it down the field, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Chase Allen, part of a deep and talented tight end group for Iowa State. Well, here's what when the play motion. breaks down, he can move around. Offense. The receiver was moving forward at the motion, at, at motion at the snap. Pelly's declined. And they held K-State last week to two for 11. Missouri State, no for 11. In the opener, Purdy again scrambles, throws on the run, wide open receiver. And Landon Akers would have had a touchdown, but he went down on a knee to take it in inside the 20 yard line. Well, the pocket, if you take a look, Landon Akers is going to run all the way across the field. He's not a primary receiver, but because Time Purdy was able to extend the play, nobody ran with Akers to the opposite sideline. Jack Trice Stadium. Iowa State's trying to defeat Oklahoma for the first time since 1960. Their last win here against the Sooners was three days before John F. Kennedy was elected president of the United States. That was a long time ago. Play fake to Brees Hall. Purdy going for the end zone in a, a crowd, and there's a flag down. He's trying to get it to his favorite target, the tight end Charlie Kohler. The hey, pass defender. interference, number 44, defense. Ineligible player downfield number 88 offense those fouls will offset and they'll replay first down the Big 12 crew Kohler's from Norman, Oklahoma You see the home of the University of Oklahoma Both of his parents have been professors at the University of Oklahoma Here's Brees Hall couple of spin moves to stay on his feet Twisting like a cyclone if cyclones <laughs> twist. I know tornadoes do <laughs> That was a good run, you know. 154 last week in their win at TCU. It's got them back on track. They had a sloppy opener and lost here at home to Louisiana. Pretty given time this time. Throws on the run. And it's an incomplete pass. Tries to sing one for Charlie Kohler and was broken up by the Connor Solly, fifth year senior, in Naperville, Illinois. Third year is their place kicker. This is from 35 to tie it, and it is good. And they don't have a quarterback run game like they used to as well. Leaning on the freshman, Seth McGowan. Charleston Rambo slipped as he took the Eddie Ogamba kickoff. And he never really did get much momentum. Belted down at the 15. Let's go back. To All right, thank you, Kevin. First and 10, Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler after the play fake. On target for a first down. It's Marvin. To get the football where he wants it to go. 16-yard gain. Now a big hole as they try to get that running game going. It is McGowan. True yards. It's a different offense right now. Shovel pass and plenty of room for Seth McGowan. Inside the 35 and chopped down by Greg Eisworth, the safety. Big game. It was fun to see. Another play fake by Spencer Rattler. He's on target. Out wide again to Marvin Mims. Conference defense last week. Haven't heard from him yet. Here's Pledger. Down at the 13-yard line. Here's tonight's Chick-fil-A. And get to the quarterback. Rattler sets, dumps it off. Close to a first down is Austin Stockner, the tight end. Tavon Kyle took him down. Robinson, they have Pledger in the game now. He's just 5'9", 193. Rattler faked it to him. Retreats. Throws back of the end zone. Is he in bounds? No. Incomplete pass. Watch 56. He's the key guy. 
They hand it off to Seth McGowan, and he has the first down with about a yard and a half to spare. He was great as a freshman. Lincoln Riley told us in Humphrey's freshman year he's talented as anybody on our team. Here's McGowan struggling to find room. Did well to get inside the five. They bought the ball at the five. Out of the gun. Rattler running out of time. Steps through the crowd. Goes up and into the end zone for a touchdown. Spencer Rattler apparently persuasive with his head coach. They go for the fourth down, convert, and cash it in with a touchdown. Now Gabe Perkins kicks off. Today in Wongu. Good kickoff return, man. Scampers out of bounds across. The, they haven't done that since the mid-60s. Brock Purdy is the quarterback. Brees Hall the running back on his right hip. Quick throw, caught, nice move after the catch. Charlie Kohler. The All-American last year and academic All-American all the way out to the 49-yard line. 700 receiving yards last year. He's on the watch list for the John Mackey Award as the best tight end of the country. Quick pitch out wide to Brees Hall, and it's chopped down after a gain of two. Brendan Radley Hunt. The next step for them is taking the ball away. They're much improved last year under Alex Grinch. The takeaway still hard to come by. Tough run by Brees Hall. He's to the 44. They'll need three more. There's Alex. That was all. It seemed like more, didn't it? Play fake by Purdy. Receiver open. Good for a first down, but there was potential for more if Xavier Hutchinson had been able to stay on his feet. But if Pat Fields made a great play, knocked the ball down, but didn't have an interception, should have been able to take it away. Purdy his man first down at the 15 yard line it's Charlie Kohler again for a 22 yard completion well, the defender slipped a little bit Delaria and Turner Yell kind of slipped at the end of this play and that enabled separation but again it's the mobility of the quarterback Purdy drifting to his left a little bit to allow that play to open for his favorite target Cole. State on the move again with a minute to go in the first quarter. Trailing 10 to 3. Hall dragged down behind the line of scrimmage by Deshaun White, who's taken over at middle linebacker for Kenneth Murray, who was a standout in the middle of that defense last year and was a first round. loss of a yard. Final seconds of an entertaining first quarter here in Ames. Purdy under duress. To hit the quick hitter to Kohler and falls incomplete. Well, this redshirt freshman, they're without Trevor Downing. I will mention all conference last year at guard, out again this week with an ankle injury. Played only one half of the first game. On third and 11, jump ball for Kohler, and it falls incomplete. There is a flag down near the goal line. Pat, a huge size advantage. Number 10, defense. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Got to play with. Well, grew up big Sooner fans. We mentioned both his parents worked at the University of Oklahoma. Wanted an offer, didn't get one. There's Perry on Winfrey dumping Brees Hall at the nine yard line on the last play of the first quarter. Oklahoma leads, but Iowa State is on the move. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. First play of the second quarter here in Ames, Iowa. Oklahoma leading 10 to 3. Iowa State has its second and goal from the nine. Rock Purdy, the quarterback, throws for the back corner of the end zone incomplete. Intended for Joe Skates, who was defended by Brendan Radley High. Matt Campbell, job he has done here at Iowa State. Trying to take that next step in the conference championship. They've won only two in the history of the program. Good twisting up front leads to pressure and a throwaway by Brock Purdy. 
Now Connor Asali came here as a walk-on. He's had a terrific career now on scholarship. Third year as their starting kicker. And that one is good. There is a flag down. Yeah, I don't think you want to take points off the board here. Riley said he has great inner belief, which is important for a quarterback. He has it. Short kickoff by Eddie Ogamba. TJ Pledger across the 30. In fact, last week against K-State in the first half, he was 17 out of 19. The problem, the two incompletions were both interceptions. Threw three picks in that game to go with four touchdowns. Scrambling around for a long time, now takes off up the field and slides down. That's a penalty it right sure there. sure is, and every official within range threw the flag. Get into a positive game. Personal foul, late hit, number 43. Defense, 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. By Spencer Rattler. Slipping as he tried to turn the corner, T.J. Pledger lost a yard. As a result, he has called fewer running plays. They get pressure with three, but Rattler gets away again. Tries to zing one to the near sideline for Charleston Rambo. It's incomplete. Can go for the quarterback, and again, no threat of the quarterback run by design this year. They dial up a blitz, and the ball's up for grabs and caught near the 20-yard line by Austin Stogner. With the blitz, they had single coverage from Good for a 31-yard gain and a first down. Oklahoma on the move again. Pledger stacked up. Seth McGowan, the running back now. That's Riley Carson, explosive. They faked it to him. And it's first and goal on another pop to Austin Stogner, the sophomore from Plano, Texas. Seventh play of the drive. Wide open in the flat. It's Jeremiah Hall for a Sooner touchdown. Even though, how is that cheating? Did you read it just now, or no, you remember read from reading it a while ago? I'm doing my research. Okay, Gabe Berkich's kickoff brought back by Kene and Wandu. Mentioned earlier, he's a very good kickoff return man. Both playing Nebraska, obviously, during the year. I don't know why they just played two conference games, but they went 2-0. They think this could be the year they end that long drought. On first down, Brock Purdy on target to chase Allen. After Russell the ball was delivered. Roughing the passer, number 44. Defense, 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. Automatic, first down. I'll be on Saturday night football. Looking forward to that one. Penalty brings the ball to the center, 46. Reese Hall trying to find some room. He does. Looks like he might be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He turned it into a gain of four. Well, that's it. We should all no, go home with 10.40 to go in the half. I just think it's a critical possession to stay where they need to stay in the game. Purdy, after a long count, is blitzed. He is trying to get away and throws it away. Let the play the next play. He's thrown it away a few times tonight. He's pressured again. Running out of room on the sideline and tried to jam that one in for Xavier Hutchinson. With Joe Rivera, fifth-year senior punter. Kick it to Marvin Mims. Virtually no breeze here at Jack Trice Stadium tonight. Mm -hmm. makes it here. And there are the Purdies. Dad, Sean, on the right of your picture. Mom, Carrie, in the middle. Sister, Whitney, on the left. She's a fine softball player. Southeastern in Lakeland, Florida. Played minor league baseball for a long time in the 90s. Nice run there by Seth McGowan. So these family families are familiar with each other. Spencer and Brock never went head to head. Both prolific careers in high school football in Arizona. Rattler set the state record for career passing yards. Purdy set the single season record for 6A with 4,400 yards as a senior. Perry High School in Gilbert, Arizona. 
Rattler throws on the move to Marvin Mims. And he's down the eight yard line. But Brock Purdy's younger brother replaced him as the starting quarterback of Gilbert Perry. Chubba, he started the last two years. And in 18, Rattler's team beat Chubba Perry's team. August of 2018. Must have been a warm night in the Valley playing in August. <laughs> Rattler had a big night. It is a dry heat. And uh, Chubba's now a true freshman quarterback at Florida State. T.J. Pledger buried by Anthony Johnson. Season record. Here's third down and three for OU. Eight and a half to go in the half. They're up 17 to six. Rattler has been elusive. He still is. And he is down at the 49-yard line with a first down. Who says he's not? One of the hallmarks of the Cyclone defense in recent years has been they are excellent tacklers. But not on that play. Made a few miss. Now he sets with all day to throw. Deflected and is it intercepted? The officials conferring. Are they going to deem that a catch by the defense? They are. I think they're calling it that way. Of course, they'll take another look. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very After much. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 at the 47 and a half. Guyler Thompson, who is tremendous, rallied for 24 on the extra points. One of the 50-yard field goal late. Rattler. All of a sudden, he's a re Really midway through the second quarter. Oklahoma leading 17 to 6. Low throw. Is it caught at the 40? Rambo, yes. First down. There's Reeves Munchaw to punt for the first time tonight for Oklahoma. Reeves Milton back and forth. And it's a fair catch at the 14 yard line. So that's where. On first down, Brock Purdy on target. Tariq Milton turns and has plenty of running room. He's across midfield and run down in OU territory. They're going to mark him down at the 43-yard line. A short completion and one poor tackle attempt by Brendan Radley Hiles. And the next thing you know, you've got a huge play. It's man coverage. There's the catch. There's the missed tackle. And a lot of green grass and excellent blocking by Hutchinson down the field, the other receiver. 42-yard play, 37 of that after the catch for Tariq Milton. Pass. Yeah, that was a backward pass. Dylan Sainer fires, and that one is caught by Chase Allen. One back big plays for the Cyclones. Dylan Sainer was a baseball pitcher in high school, supposedly could throw 90 miles per hour. Didn't need to throw that one that hard, but he got it. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. They move Sainer around all over the place, pull back, tight end. First and ten, Cyclones at the Sooners 15. Iowa State down by 11. There's Brees Hall. A lot of folks around the country haven't heard of the sophomore from Wichita, but he's emerged as one of the best running backs in the country. Leading the Big 12 in Russia coming in. So leading the country among those who have played at least two games. They toss it out to him again. He's very near the first down. Came up about a yard short at, at the six-yard line. Here's a big third down and one for Matt Campbell and the OC Tom Manning. It's a Greece Hall here. Now you don't have to. Assuming that's on Perry on Winfrey, and everybody here in Ames thinks that it is. Yeah, it's well, a huge start, call. Number nine. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. This, this, here's skates, but this didn't affect why this guy went early. Okay, there is the movement. That's definitely a penalty on skates. But it's after skates move. Give Matt Campbell a lot of credit. He is losing his mind, but he, <laughs> he kept it together. Well, that's a huge. Now third down and six. Five minutes to go in the half. Hall in trouble behind the line. Breaks a couple of tackles. Has the first down near the two-yard line. Nice. Was the block by Sainer. We saw him throw a pass. He gets the key block here. 
Nice job running out of a, a, a would-be tackle, and that's just an effort run by Brees Hall to that's get the first down. Trey Norwood who whiffed. 13. With their first touchdown of the night. And shifting motions, and they do a lot of that. All start number 75. Offense, five-yard pass. Back at the eight-yard line. First and goal. Rock Purdy. Play fake. Throws it up for grabs. Flag down. It was batted away. Brendan Radley Hiles looking at the officials if he cannot believe. And Radley Hiles here. just ran number right through the receiver. Defense. The ball be placed in the two-yard line. He's all over him. He climbed up his back. First down. I mean, that, that's an easy call. No doubt. So there's a way you can score on a penalty. That's the way this is going right now. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a quarterback run. Purdy out of the gun. And Brees Hall into the end zone for the Cyclone touchdown. His fifth rushing touchdown in just three games this season. Beautiful job by Derek Schwager, the left guard. Starting on that side tonight. Nice double team with the left guard in the center. Then Schweiger comes off onto the next defender. And a good power run by Brees Hall to get the touchdown. Oh, you put words okay, in my comeback, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point is good. And Connor Asali. Hall had three rushing touchdowns last week in their win against TCU. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 77 of the kicking team. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff timeout on the field. Eddie Ogamba, after the penalty, should be great field position here for Oklahoma. Charleston Rambo, almost to midfield. As we went to the commercial break, it was hard to see what happened, but watch 77 in the middle of your screen. Yeah, that's Robert Hudson. You're going to see him get double teamed and just taken to his back. Now, his right leg, I think, is what got the penalty. I think he's going to reach up and kick number 95. But right here, number 90, Josh Ellison got away with a little bit of a punch there, too. It could have been personal foul on both players. Oh, here's Oklahoma on the 50-yard line. Good kick him. Right, it looked like there was a swing. Uh, Josh Ellison as well, and unpunished. Seth McGowan on first and ten for midfield. Takes them. And the dish halftime report. Look out, Rattler again. Evades the rush. He did well to get close to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Johnson came on a corner blitz. Leading sack man in school history. Well blocked on that play. Rattler with time to get it to T.J. Fledger for a first down to the 28. The uh, Ely primarily a right tackle last year. Play either tackle and has. Fledger with a flag down. In Ely for Personal a foul. Face mask, number 59. Offense, 15 yards. There's John Haycock, defensive coordinator. A great job. He was a 4-2-5 defensive guy. Then they got here, didn't play good defense. They changed their structure in the middle of the 2017 season to this 3-3-5. And they stopped McGowan on a short gain. He said, I was tired of the way we were playing defense. We met as a staff. Said, let's figure out a way to get our best 11 players on the field. Yeah. People all over the country have come to talk to him, to watch, to learn, to try to emulate that defense. He brings pressure. And it's dumped off. Jaquan Bailey takes down Seth McGowan. They have a lot of speed on that defense. Here's another blitz. Looked like the same play. This time it's Pledger on the catch. He's taken down from behind well shy of the line. Snap and hold are good. And that kick is no good. Blame Todd McShay and Todd Black. Entertaining first half. Oklahoma leads at the break 17 13.
send you to the studio for the Dish Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. On first down, Brock Purdy. That was a nifty play. And it's Brees Hall for about 12 and a first down. Here's Molly McGrath. When he first got here to Iowa State, inherited a program with very little success in its history. Nice play by Brees Hall. Boy, that looked like it would be a loss. Instead, he turned it into a gain. And the Cyclone fans want a late hit out of bounds. He got shoved out by Brian Asamoa. Well, first of all, Deshaun White had him dead to rights in the backfield and missed the tackle and just an instinctive spin and go out the other way. And then off of that 154-yard gain last week. Here he comes again, running right. Winnable game, and for them to take the next step in their program, these are the kind of games they have to find a way to win. Exactly what Brock Purdy, the quarterback, said when he visited with him. He gets away from rushers, dumps it off for Charlie Kohler. That's another first down. Trey Brown chopped him down, but it goes to the Sooner 33. 16 for 159. Three of those balls completed to Charlie Kohler for 56 yards. Flag down, big hole. Kane and Wongu inside the 20, inside the five, and down at the three yard line. But there is a flag along the near sideline, near the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation, more than four players in the backfield. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Now this is what Matt Campbell was talking about. I mean, the the penalties like this, the lack of concentration lining up. Back to the 38. Some late pressure from Osamo was picked up. And the pass incomplete. But here come the flags against Oklahoma's trade. Enjoy this late. They've lost 24 in a row at home to Oklahoma, dating back to 1960. Purdy off his back foot, throws it up for grabs, and it's batted down. Try again to get it to Charlie Kohler, and it was Pat Fields who knocked it away. Then a turnover by either team in this game. Third down and nine, they're in field goal range. They'll hold off on setting the kicker on as they convert on the completion of Chase Allen. Had a good game at Oklahoma last year. Three catches, 33 yards, and a touchdown in that one for Chase Allen. First and goal just inside the 10. Hall in a heap of trouble and down. About a four-yard loss. And Perkins looking on, suspended, but there are reports he could play next week that his suspension might be shortened. Oklahoma officials wouldn't confirm that, but they're optimistic. There's still conversations to be had. Hall! He wanted to go up and over. The defender backed away, so he stuck the landing, and then Trey Brown knocked him down or out of bounds. There is a flag Holding down. number 55. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. And McGrath said Matt Campbell at the half, not pleased with the discipline of his team. Penalized six times. Second and goal from back beyond the 20. Purdy on the run off the hands of his intended receiver, Landon Akers. Two. Matt Campbell called timeout. Uh, just the penalties and uh, the disjointedness. I was saying the penalties have created first charge timeout with this possession the second half. troublesome. Timeout on the field. The 44. We're back in Ames, Iowa. Third down and goal for the Cyclones. At the Oklahoma 24. Iowa State down by four to hurt themselves with penalties on this drive. Brees Hall makes it an easier field goal try for Connor Asali. Very good kickers in this game. Asali's two for two tonight. And now three for three as he kicks a 32-yard field goal. So they were down 17 to six. They scored 10 unanswered points, and it's a one-point game as we approach the midpoint of the third quarter. So one of the all-time greats, Larry Karras, who was his head coach at Mount Union. 
play college football. Rambo again. <laughs> On first down, first play from scrimmage of this half to dunk down to Jeremiah Hall, who got dragged down, but he has a first down with a quarter. Stay in attack mode with the lead. Seth McGowan leaves through the crowd. Gets about eight. In his fifth year here. Going three and nine his first year. Now 24 and 17 cents. Winning record, at least seven wins each of the last three years. They've been to a bowl game each of the last three seasons. McGowan stays in the block. Rattler runs again. Wow. Fancy footwork. <laughs> and now there's a flag down well into the play. He did get the first down with a yard or two to spare. And Orion Vance, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. I think they might call a blindside block on Seth McGowan. I think that's what we might have here. Holding number 52. Yep. Offense. Hurting both sides. The sixth Oklahoma penalty. 69 yards. Rambo retreating and dragged down. The red shirt junior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Well, that's a great play by Vance because that is one of, I think, Lincoln Riley's best plays. It, it's, it's a crossing route, but because it's around the line of scrimmage, players can block downfield, so it's really a... So third down and 14 for Oklahoma. It's first possession of the second half. Rattler steps up again. He's across the line of scrimmage, across midfield, and out of bounds, shy of the line to make by about a half a yard. Seth McGowan, the running back. They fake it to him. Rattler had nowhere to throw it originally, throws near side, and it is caught for a first down by Drake Stoops. Apparently stayed on his feet to get that extra yardage after the catch. Stoops for the first down. Drake, the son of the all-time Leader in coaching wins at Oklahoma, Bob Stoops, making a big game last week against K-State. Good job by Pledger to stay in bounds. They'll mark him out at the 32-yard line. Second and five, Cyclones trial the line of scrimmage. Rattle over the middle. First down, Austin Stogner. Looks like a hard hit, but held on to the football, and he'll mark him down at the... They may get there. I mean, they've got some young, promising guys. Go back to the ground here. A couple of nice cuts by T.J. Pledger. Three minutes to go in a fast-moving third quarter. Teams had it only once in this quarter. Rattler tucks it down again. He's across the line of scrimmage and taken down right there by Jake Hummel. They're such good tacklers. He's a senior from Des Moines. Well, Here's a big third down and five. Rattler fires to the end zone off the hands of Obi Obiolo. So here's Berkich. A little miss from 54 just before the half. His first career miss. And he's not going to miss two in a row. That's good. The play, Clemson number one. Alabama right on their heels. Tied a big win today over Texas A&M. Brock Purdy throwing deep into double coverage. And it's knocked down. He was trying to get it to Landon Acres. And it was batted up. Not been a turnover in this game. Purdy on the run too high. Threw it over the head of Xavier Hutchinson. That's where Brock Purdy has to be very smart with the football. Third and long, tight, low scoring game. He was punted only once. Purdy. Lost the football. I believe he got it back after Nick Benito stripped it. He did. Holding, Holding. Number, six. number six, defense. Wow. 
10-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. Oh, okay. Possession continues. Cyclones from their own 35-yard line, taking down to a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Well, they reestablish Brees Hall. They fake it to him. Here's a big hitter, and it's going to be the first lead of the night for Iowa State. Xavier Hutchinson, who turned down Oklahoma and came to Iowa State, gives the Cyclones the lead on a 65-yard play. Watch the fake by Purdy. That fake is going to hold all these guys, and he's got single coverage out here on the corner. Jaden Davis, the fake holds everybody. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Hutchison beats Jaden Davis, and the rest is history. But the fake by Brock Purdy brought up all those defenders and opened the middle of the field beautifully. Honor Asali adds the extra point. There's Tom Manning. He's the play caller, offensive coordinator. Mount Union people everywhere you look here tonight. He played yeah. at Mount Union and uh, started his high school career coaching at Jackson High School in Massillon, Ohio, where Matt Campbell's dad was then the principal. He had left the coaching profession. And uh, I thought Tom Manning was interesting the other day. He said, I, I basically owe my whole career to Campbell's, and I never really had to interview for a job. That's right. <laughs> He said, Matt Campbell's great, but Mr. Campbell He's is the man. The man. Yeah, Rick Campbell. Since 1960, they've lost 24 in a row here to the Sooners. Eddie Ogumba, the kickoff. Like Rambo had a hard time picking that one up. It's a long touchdown and the first lead for Iowa State. Well, Look at Charlie for the first time tonight. Rattler gets rattled by a blitz off the corner from Eric Horn. He never saw it. He is reading the left side of the formation. Usually with a right-handed quarterback, you're going to see this blitz. But watch Spencer Rattler's eyes are looking left the whole way. He never feels the blitz, and he's lucky he holds on to the football. Play clock down to three. Second and 18. Rattler bought plenty of time for himself. Fires and too low. Coming open was Theo Howard, the transfer from UCLA. He's going to get bailed out because uh, we're going to see another late hit on Iowa State after the ball was thrown. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 32, defense with targeting. That's a terrible penalty, totally needless. They would have had Oklahoma in a big pile of trouble. Going down in a pile of Seth McGowan. Manny Uzurike makes the tackle. Uzurike's. They're on the ropes. They haven't lost back-to-back -back regular season games since 1999. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. Thank you, Kevin. Here it's a three-point Iowa State lead. Spencer Rattler throws over the middle and it's caught. That threw to Theo Howard. And it's a first down for... Played in only one game last year due to a wrist injury. That game was against Oklahoma. T.J. Pledger, the running back. Flea flicker. Rattler. Long throw downfield. The sideline for Oklahoma wants a flag. They felt Marvin Mims was in her second and ten. Light rain has begun to fall here in Ames, and it's chilly. We're down into the high 40s now. 49 degrees with a light wind. Shovel pass. Seth McGowan lowers his head, goes down in ISU territory, about two yards short of the first down, and here comes a two. Rattler. Long throw. Has a man behind. The defense, the ball under thrown, and that helps draw the flag. Because as Rambo came back for it, he collided with Greg Eisworth. 
And it'll be a pass. Almost as if we're having a little squall here. Seth McGowan trying to find running room, and enough of that, says Mike Rose. <laughs> You can only dance so long. You can dance maybe one step, and then you got to hit a hole and a crease and go. And Second and 12. The fake to McGowan. Rattler incomplete. Trying to jam it in to Austin Stockner. Aishim Young, the safety from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, broke it up. Rattler, 19 out of 26 for 250. They rush five. They're in hot pursuit. Running out of time as he throws down the field and through the hands of Theo Weiss. That looked catchable, but he didn't catch it. One for 79 of 80 for his career, including PATs. From 51, it would be a career long into a breeze to tie. And he is right back on track and right down the middle. And we're tied at 23 apiece with play pretty solid. Brock Purdy on first down, gave it to Brees Hall, stacked up after a one-yard game. Hall stays on his feet, but didn't quite stay on the feet long enough to get the first down, but he got about quarterbacks who hail from Arizona. Well, there was a top recruit, Purdy, under the radar. He dumps it down to Brees Hall, and that's the first down. Royce was preaching the chance to come to a place where they haven't done it before and do it. This is what he had in mind. Chance to beat a team like Oklahoma here tonight. He pitched it back to Brees Hall again, and Brian Meade made the tackle. Back up 24 straight home losses to OU. Purdy, the ball is out, knocked out of his hands, and there's that turnover you were talking about. Isaiah Thomas knocked it out. And he got there. A year and a half ago from Ohio State. On first down, Pledger. That's about six. Only second down and four. McGowan. Well, didn't look like a freshman on that run. Patience to find the hole and then accelerated through it. Big gainer inside the 20 and another first down. to go play fake by Rattler throws inside the five Stogner it'll be first and goal from the three you like that fullback out in the flat there he is yep looks like the touchdown earlier to Jeremiah Hall that one was a four yarder and this one gives Oklahoma the lead on a three including the go ahead pass to Jeremiah Hall both of them have been short throws to Hall for the two touchdown passes and Wangu, and Wangu across midfield. Burkett's the kicker, couldn't get him. Can Washington? He shoves him out of bounds. But what a return by and Wangu. Washington lucky to knock him out of bounds. But what an answer for the Iowa State Cyclones after giving up the touchdown after the turnover. They are right in the red zone for Brock Purdy in the Cyclone offense. 85-yard kickoff return for Wangu, fifth-year senior from Frisco, Texas. Came into tonight for his career, averaging 26.1 per kickoff return in his career. Fifth best among all active players in the country. That's one of the biggest of his career. Brees Hall, who was having his left ankle taped, well, Oklahoma was scoring that go-ahead touchdown. Oklahoma's defense paying a lot of attention to him. Here's Kohler, jump ball, and they throw a flag. Looked like some hand fighting by both of them. But you wonder if it's going to six, two, fifty, seven, forty-four. Defense foul occurred in the end zone. Ball replaced at the two-yard line. So Three yards away and an extra point from a tie. And they punch it in. Purdy wants to do it himself, and he does. Brock Purdy from three yards up. And the Purdy family 
everybody celebrates. They're not used to this kind of weather in Arizona, especially not in October. Turn of more than 40 yards. And then from just inside the three, officially a two yard touchdown for Brock Purdy at, at Oklahoma State. Tied at 30 apiece midway through the fourth quarter. TJ Pledger on first and 10. He's played mistake free football so far tonight. Steps into a bomb down the field, and it is incomplete. Leaping effort by the true freshman, Marvin Mims. Got to think about Stogner here, right here in the slot. Kind of been his go-to guy on third down. This team will be penalized start. for the ninth Number 59, time. offense. You're really behind the chains. John Haycock rushed four, and they get to Rattler. Back inside the 20. Mike Rose leading the way, the linebacker on the blitz. And he certainly was there. So here's just the second punt of the night for Oklahoma's Reeves Munshaw. That one blocked by K-State last week. That was a big play. Got this one off. And a fair catch made in traffic. Brees Hall trying to get outside the left, and he gets tackled around the legs. Nice play by find a way to position your team to score one more time here. Pretty beautiful throw on the quick slant to Charlie Kohler. The Oklahoma fan growing up, grew up right in Norman. His parents both worked at the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> on first down, it's Brees Hall. He doesn't go down. He might go all the way. They finally wrestle him down inside. The 10-yard line. What a run by Brees Hall. He, he had to talk his way back into the game with the, the left ankle injury that he had. The trainers looked at him and he said, you know what, I'm, I'm going in. It doesn't matter. And to have that big play right there is huge. Yeah, and just, you know, poor tackling by Oklahoma. We saw this last week in a couple instances in the meltdown against Kansas State, and it couldn't have happened at a worse time right now. 36-yard run, fourth play of 30-plus. He stays on his feet again and scores! Touchdown, Iowa State. The Cyclones go back on top with 4.06 to go. This Oklahoma defense, and for the first time tonight, this Oklahoma defense has the look of defeat a little bit. That possession, they didn't tackle well. They got out of gaps. It's the first time we've really seen that out of their defense tonight. Big extra point here for a seven-point lead. Honor Asali, it's up and good. A Brees Hall quiet for a lot of the night. But he stepped to the forefront when his team needed him most. Showed some great balance on that drive. He's rushed for 129 and two touchdowns. Iowa State, are they 406 away from their first win over OU here since 1960? Carson Rambo, he's got to step up along with Stogner now. They'll throw it out wide for a short completion to Charleston Rambo. He's the least all night. He plays with his arm and his feet. McGowan. Reverses field, got too much dancing. Yeah, a lot of dancing, then he ran into Rattler, and he goes down for a loss, swarmed under. They're gonna give him forward progress, if that's what you would call it, to about the 35-yard line. Timeouts for each team, third down and 10. Coming again. Rattler, man, open short of the first down. And Theo Weiss can't get there. He had a huge drop, if you will, on a ball that went through his hands. 
Play clock down to two. They've taken all kinds of time. And now a timeout called by Iowa State. Oklahoma hasn't lost back-to-back -back regular season games since 1999. They need to convert. Did he hang on? Yes, he did. Moving on the field as a completed pass. First down. 51 more. And an extra point to tie. T.J. Pledger. Swung down by Mike Rose. So they'll have two timeouts to use. On second and five. Pressure in his face. Rattler hit as he threw it, and it floats out of bounds in the direction of Jeremiah Hall. Rattler throws over the middle, man wide open. It's Hall with another big catch. Two touching receivers to that side. Rattler's thrown for 301. Looking deep, looking into double coverage, and he made a critical mistake. It's intercepted by Aishim Young. This is a situation where a young quarterback only saw half the field. He First career interception for the redshirt freshman, four-star recruit out of Philadelphia. Aishim Young. And now Brees Hall with under a minute to go. Towards the end of the round. Brees Hall, well, he is livid. He was also upset right after they converted that fourth. Well, if you're Brees Hall right now and you get the ball, the biggest thing is ball security. Oklahoma's going to try to strip it. First down and it's over. It's a first down and it's over. And a lot Streaks are over, including the 24 consecutive losses at home for Iowa State against Oklahoma, dating back to 1960. Only the 24th win ever for Iowa State against a ranked opponent, and seven of them have come in the last five years under Matt Campbell. He has taken this program to places they haven't been very often. And now they're 2-0 oh in conference with Oklahoma 0-2, oh the preseason favorite. Texas already a loss in conference. Matter of fact, there are only three undefeated teams left in the Big 12. Iowa State, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State.